And next up, we have Valentin Charavi talking about scoped values. And what they're good for. Um, perfect. Yes. Thank you. If you were here in the morning and uh, listened to me talk about compiler plugins, you might have heard me talk about scoped values. Scoped values are a new language feature. They are arriving, I think, with 11, 1.11. Um, and they solve a problem that we um, found ourselves to be having in uh, concurrent applications a lot. Um, we need to persist settings configurations across tasks. And we had a very special implementation for that for the logging infrastructure. So when you called with logger and you set your logger to be a fancy logger or a network logger or um, a logger that goes to a file, that logger would be propagated across all of the tasks that were spawned within the region of the code. And that was very useful. And other people wanted to have that as well for their special settings, configurations, or similar objects like loggers. Um, scope values takes this notion of an inherited value, generalizes this, and then um, allows it to, for users to have it. Um, funnily enough, it was inspired by me reading um, an OpenJDK enhancement improvement, um, which is not normally where I get my good ideas from. And I, I also need to acknowledge prior work on this in Julia. Um, uh, Takafumi Araki um, proposed context variables, which had a lot of the similarities, but some key differences. Um, what were my, our goals where we wanted to, them to be as cheap as possible? So when we switch tasks, uh, there should be no copies, no overhead, anything like that. Um, also, when we spawn a new task, there should be no need to copy something. Um, they should also be cheap to access, and that's actually very tricky. Like, it's very hard to get to what is cheap to access. I settled at around 12 nanoseconds. That would be lovely. Um, and it should scale to large numbers of scope values. So we did a lot of different implementation ex um, exercises and discarded a huge swath of them because they wouldn't scale to 3,000 values, which is what I expect the differential equations ecosystem to eventually need anyway. Um, they should also be minimally special. Right? Yes, this is a new language feature. This is a feature that the runtime supports. But the code implementation outside of some very small things you should have been able to do in a package. And actually, there is a package that up to Julia 1.8 um, gives you backwards compatible for scope values. One difference to prior solutions is that I really wanted immutable semantics. So when I look up a scope value in a context or in a scope, it should always return the same value back to me. And this is really important because it allows for compiler optimizations. OK. so how did with logging uh, with logger look like? Right, we have a function f. It accesses the logging state. And then with logger would spawn that function. And I could concurrently also change that to a different logger. So I could have as many loggers as possible in my system. Well, if you look at scope values uh, in 1.11, I now have this const backend, which is basically a global constant value, which I initialize to be a scope value. I give it a default value because I like default values. And then I can access this within my simulation argument as if it was something special. And now I can use with, say I want this global value to be now be pointing to CUDA. I'm switching my computational backend to CUDA. And now somewhere deep in the uh, simulation stack of differential equations, somebody calls this function. And it can look at this uh, global constant um, scope value and get Oh, yeah, I sh I'm supposed to be running on the CUDA backend. And that's it. You know, very simple. Um, some people have asked me, why are these not just arguments? And that's because right, we, if I have an argument, I need to thread it through everything. And so these scope values, I can access them from anywhere, as long as I have a reference to the actual key. Um, so scope values are constant within a scope. You have no set index. But get index is used to access the value within. Um, if you want to change the value of a scope value, you need to enter new dynamic scope with with. That's a sentence to say. Um, and if you're messing with current task dot scope, 
you're using undefined behavior, and the compiler will come and uh, eat your code. There's one person I know who currently is doing that. Please stop. Um, but while scope values are Im uh, immutable, they can point to mutable data. So if I put a dictionary into a scope value, I suddenly need to think about, OK, what happens if I mutate that uh, dictionary? So my recommendation is on scoped entry to then create a new dictionary where I merge the values um, across. Um, one of the implementation secrets is that a scoped value actually is empty. It's just a mutable struct. Why is it mutable and not immutable? Because of object identity. So when you create a new scope value, that acts as a key to the hidden um, persistent dictionary that is in the background implemented. We could have gone with immutable dict, but then we couldn't have scaled to 3,000 variables. Um, also, one of the lessons I had while implementing it was the storage location is typed as any. And to maintain that uncertainness that any as long as possible to um, avoid performance penalties, and just at the last moment before handing it back to the user, do the type conversion and the potential unboxing. Um, thanks to Keno, we have um, optimizations. So current scope can be get folded. The compiler can now reason about persistent data structures. Right now, there is a little bit of an uh, inefficiency in that an access might allocate. Um, Cody is working on fixing that, so thanks, Cody. And the funniest use I found is an MLIR.gl where it changes the dynamic library being used by the API. So you can load multiple versions of a dynamic library and have one package access it all. Which, uh, why, is a good question, but it works. All right, round of applause for Valentin. All right, we have time for one to two questions. Uh, one question. Do we really have a use case with 3,000 scope values? <sighs> Not yet, <laughs> but I know my customers. I actually, um, I recently found a use in Cedar where it might look like they have a lot for no reason that I fully understand, but yeah, they're growing, they're multiplying, and that's, that's the problem with a language feature. We don't know. So we need to be robust, and it wasn't too costly. This seems related to dynamic scope variables in Lisp, in common Lisp from the 70s. Is that? Yep. It's basically the same thing, except that it's not a variable. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I went back into literature, and that feature-ish thing has been existing for a while. But the difference is it's not mutable. Dynamic variables in Lisp are mutable. And I think that's why they f fell out of fashion, because they're so hard to reason about because of that. Thank you so much. Uh, we don't have time for any more questions, um, but let's have another round of applause. Thank you all.